again, hi, I'm Robin. Uh, this is my Twitter, Robin Pokorny. You can follow me. You can tweet me. If you have any questions, I will answer that. Today, I will be talking about AMP. AMP is a short for Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, but you will never hear that, like, hear that uh, aloud. Everybody's saying AMP, and I will be saying on the AMP, and you will see on the AMP on the Google and everywhere, so you don't have to remember the whole thing. <clears throat> what is AMP? AMP is a technology or a family of technologies uh, from Google. In this presentation, I would like to introduce AMP. I would like to say what has happened in the past 15 months, that's, that's right, AMP has been released 15 months ago, and I will have 15 symbolic points uh, I want to make about AMP. And then I will have a brief uh, showcase of what was presented at the AMP conference, oh yeah, it has a conference, uh, about the future of the technology. What does AMP solve? Performance. Page performance, page load performance. That's the time between you click on a link in a search result on Facebook or anywhere else, and the time you can see something which you came from on the page, you can interact with the page, uh, or when the page uh, finishes loading, when everything is done there. And that's a, that's a pressing problem we face right now. There are many technologies, there are many uh, approaches how to solve that, how to make the site faster, uh, especially on mobile phones, because Google connections, uh, wet uh, phones, I mean, some people use, I don't know, uh, old phones. And then uh, last week there was a, a CSS conf uh, in Berlin, and many people were telling that WWW does not stand for wealthy Western web, but World Wide Web. And there are billions of devices in countries like India, which are connected to the internet, but don't have the power to display the sites as our newest iPhones. And we make the websites for them too. And we want them to be our customers sometimes. And if we solve the problem for them, it will kind of automatically be solved for the others, for the people with uh, fancy new phones. But as you see, it's not easy. Uh, Guardian is leading in this uh, movement and they made an enormous effort to make this site fast. Uh, this is some uh, lighthouse tool from Google that measures the site performance. As you can see, the Guardian is green, 199 uh, points or whatever. But then you have a tech, tech crunch, also a new site, and you see that everything's red, which means it's bad. It's, it's kind of straightforward. So it means it's not easy to do that. We need something that would help us to make websites fast. And that would be, oh, no, would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, what? <laughs> no, uh, I have your bootstrap because in a, in a certain sense, bootstrap and AMP is similar. If you remember five years ago when bootstrap was introduced, there was uh, CSS3 was new, Responsive design was uh, flourishing, but nobody knew how to handle that. And you had teams who somehow solved these problems and they were copying what they did on one project to the other project to some uh, normal guys who didn't know how to handle that. So they didn't create responsive websites and they lose customers and maybe they wanted to do that. They didn't know how. And now in this situation, Bootstrap, Bootstrap 2 to be precise, comes and says, okay, this is how you create a responsive website. It's easy. We have components, we have a grid, uh, we have other tools, and people said, yeah, we, we like that, and started working with that. An agency said, okay, let's make all the websites on Bootstrap because we will share the knowledge between projects, we can make our own extensions, our own customizations, uh, then you could buy Bootstrap themes on ThemeForest or wherever you buy uh, themes, and it became kind of a universal standard. At certain point, it was maybe too much, and every website looked like a Bootstrap documentation. What I want to say, a Bootstrap became to be used for a small project because it was it was there. Everything you needed was there, easy. Just just a 
I don't know, a, a, a grab away. But it was certainly the US uh, big companies because it was solved. It was easy to, uh, to transform this knowledge. And that's what I think the parallel between AMP and Bootstrap is. I think that what Google provides in the AMP is a technology that helps you to get good performance. And it's not like, uh, there will be things you will not agree with. There will be things you might say, okay, I don't want that. But that's also in Bootstrap, right? I mean, I hate Bootstrap Grid. I, I always hated that. I, I wrote my own. Uh, but in the end, it doesn't matter because the value of sharing something is better than having like something really cool and uh, built for my use case. AMP. AMP is essentially three parts. The first part is HTML, but it's not the usual HTML because it's a subset of HTML5. What is missing are those parts that make the website slow, like images. Oh, wow. Uh, you can't have an image in AMP. Well, you can, but I will show you later. You can't have an uh, image tag. Why is that? Because images are usually loaded synchronously. And when you load a page, it starts loading all the images. But maybe you don't want that. You want to load them asynchronously when the user scrolls there. Maybe he's on a bad connection, so you want to download a different image. There are many things. So uh, you don't have images in there. You don't have videos. You don't have scripts. Uh, that's the same. Uh, you can't link external CSS in there. You can inline it. It has to be less than 50 kilobytes. And that's like a best use, uh, sorry, a best practice. Because it will load fast. Everything's into HTML. That's kind of the idea of the AMP. It's one file that includes the data, the article. And then you extend that. Maybe with images, maybe with video. But that's kind of a secondary content to a certain extent. Oh. You tell that by including a literal Thunderbolt emoji in HTML tag. That's how you say this is AMP. I like that. And of course, there's a validator for that, so you can check if you are compliance with, in compliance with the specification. Second part would be AMP runtime. When I said you can't include JavaScript, it was true, because you can't include your JavaScript but do you have to include Google's JavaScript? Uh, that's, that's the magic behind AMP. Uh, it will take care of like uh, loading the assets, uh, loading things asynchronously. It, it runs behind that and, and makes things connected. That's like kind of the core in a certain uh, way. And it provides you with some components. Oh, there's the image. But you can't call it image. You have to call it AMP image. Why is that? Because then the runtime can read it and can say, okay, I understand this and I know when to show this uh, and I know how to show it. Uh, I will tell you later about that, but it can do some magic with that. Uh, and because you can't include your JavaScript, if you want to have an interactivity in your page, again, you need to take some component provided by MP, uh, just like a carousel, because you would have to have something for the swiping, but you have a component for that. Uh, the same for analytics or, or some social buttons and things like that. Uh, now I see that it feels limiting and it is, but it's again, the same thing as I said, when we agree that these things can be done asynchronously this way, we gain the performance. This is the limitation. And I mean, nobody would write it like this if they could, but because we have this whole ecosystem, it works as I will show. The third time, uh, sorry, the third thing. And it's something that you cannot get anywhere else. And it's one of the biggest selling points of AMP. AMP is a Google's technology. And what they did is they included AMP cache in the search result page. What I mean by that is that Google will crawl the uh, site, will find your AMP website, will take it to, the, to their servers, uh, will minify the HTML, uh, it can inline images for the above the fold screen and other uh, performance optimizations you kind of could do on your own server, but now you don't have to think about them. And then it does the greatest thing of all. It shows this uh, AMP Thunderbolt next to your result. Why is that great? Well, come on. 
marketing. It's different, right? No, that's, that's not true. The thing is that when users will find these more and more often, they will realize how fast they are. Okay, you get this image. I mean, yeah, cool if you are marketing people. But for us developers, there's something more. When you are on the result page, Google will load your website on background. In fact, the images, just like the HTML and the CSS, which is already there. And then when you click on the link, it will just push it there instantaneously. That's, uh, that's like the biggest performance boost you can get. It, it can be faster. I mean, right now it only works for Google. There are discussions about other, and I think that Baidu is implemented as well. But imagine that, you click and it's there. I mean, even if you spend a team on improving performance, this is something you cannot get anywhere else. This is how it looks, by the way. As I said, when the page is rendered in the background, it doesn't include images because the Google doesn't know if you will actually click on that link. So it's a bare bone HTML and the CSS and the things you have there uh, with the basic runtime running, but it's paused. Let's call it paused. When you click on it, it will unpause it. And the best thing is, or I, I said best too much, right? I mean, it's really great, but nothing is that best. A few things that are really best. But okay, a cool thing is that you have to specify a size of every element on the page. That means there is no reflow of the elements. You remember, you go to a website, you want to click on the article, but then this weird ad with the Japanese schoolgirl uh, pillow, for some reason, uh, comes up and you click on that and you get there, but you say, oh no, I wanted to click on that thing, but everything moved after, after two seconds. This doesn't happen with AMP because as you see, it knows the size of the element and it just makes a space in there and the images are loading, but nothing is moving uh, without you wanting that. Oh, layout, oh, that's a good one. Uh, I got a few questions about layout because people think that AMP, the M being mobile, as I said, means that it's only for mobile. That's not true. I mean, it's, it's targeted on mobile, but it will work generally on, like in any device that can display HTML or even just HTML, that's also great. In the CSS, if it's under 50 kilobytes, you can include anything. You can include uh, media queries, you can include animations. There's basically two things you can do. You can do import and you can do important. That's it, otherwise you can do anything. So you can create a full feature layout. And I mean, I mean maybe we'll have time to see an example. I mean, the, actually the documentation for AMP is an example of an AMP page, which is full featured and works on desktop and it's a gorgeous design. So how's AMP going? Uh, it's been 15 months. And since that time, there's been around 1.7 billion AMP pu uh, pages published. By billion, I mean American billion, 10 to the power of uh, nine. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of pages, right? And what's maybe even better is that it's almost a million domains. And big ones too. eBay now uh, supports AMP. WordPress supports AMP. And of course, uh, uh, the New York Times, they are like a big selling thing for, for AMP. What they do is they usually uh, generate a alternative version, which can run on a subdomain, so you would have for example, amp.newyorktimes.com. And they would like link between these two. So when you come to the, from a search result, you will receive the AMP version, which is instantaneous. But then when you click on the link, you will get to the normal page, which can take a low, low, uh, longer time to load, right? But you are already on the page, you get the information, uh, and you will maybe kind of uh, don't care that much, but we can, see how it can be solved. But many people are comparing this, if you think of how it works, with Facebook instant articles, right? That's very similar. It's also an alternative version of a web. And it's fast. And then when you click, you get to some other page. The difference is that AMP is a working website. So 
it's not that unthinkable of having only AMP version. Yes, it has certain limitations, but for many websites, it could be just enough. Maybe not, let's say, not all the pages. It could be like a subset of the pages would be AMP only, but you don't have to think about it. It works and it's fast. Uh, that, that, uh, that comes to thing I forgot to say. AMP is mostly targeted to static content. Articles are a great example. Something you come to read, like news. You see, like you, you, you want to know about this thing that's happening right now. You click on it, you see the article, you can read it. And then the image is low. It's not for applications. Interactivity is like a secondary thing in these pages. It's important to think, uh, to remember. And as I promised, I said that since the release of the first version of AMP, there's been a huge development. But where was that? So I said AMP is three things. Uh, AMP HTML, there hasn't been much development. I'm not sure if it has changed here. Uh, AMP runtime, well, I mean, there was some, some uh, optimizations, but it hasn't changed that much. And Google search, yeah, a few things, like icons move, I don't know, uh, things change, but nothing substantial. So where is the change? Web components. AMP was from the very beginning designed to be extend extensible. Uh, when I spoke about the carousel at the beginning, it's not part of the AMP runtime. You have to ask for it. You have to include a script async, so it's fast, tag, which includes this element. And after you include it, you can use it. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, elements you can use. Uh, I actually, I think in the, in the runtime, there are only two, the image and, and pixel. And all the others you have to ask for. And of course, they can present new ones very easily. Uh, oh, by the way, you can't include your own. Uh, they are whitelisted in the runtime. So yeah, sorry, you can't still include your JavaScript. But still, uh, it's open sourced, and many companies has create, have created a component for their own use. Uh, like YouTube, yeah, YouTube, let's go YouTube. It also enables iframe, which means that any embed you have, you can put it into the page, but it will be loaded asynchronously and you have to specify the size. The same if, I don't know, sidebar or custom fonts, everything is possible there. And if you have a use case, you can open an issue and they will probably target that. They are very open about it. So what they could do is that they could add new things, which add new features like dynamic data. As I said, uh, AMP is for static content, but sometimes you want to do something dynamic, like loading a list, which is a JSON, and then displaying it. Uh, think of related articles or recent articles. You don't want them to be part of the cached HTML. You want them to be loaded every time you come to the page. What this does, it will download synchronously. Everything's asynchronous. I will not say that. It's just everything's asynchronous. The JSON, and then it will run the JSON for each, uh, sorry, the template for each item in the JSON, so you can display the uh, articles. Second thing that could be an example of uh, dynamic data, data is form. Uh, you have to include AMP form, and then you can include a form which are some input fields and a submit button. And then when you click on the submit, the request will be made, and it comes, and it's either a success or not. When it's a success, uh, you can generate a template where the information received will be shown, and the same works for the for the error. It is a little bit wordy as you as you look at it, but it makes sense, and you can copy it, and it works. I would say pretty well, and it's you just describe what you want, right? You don't have to think about the programming; just some API. Then was uh, introduced AMP experiment in the past year which as you might think is for A-B testing. Uh, you just define the variants and then it will add some of the variants to the, it's a class name, sorry, uh, it's a class name? No, sorry, it will add uh, an attribute on the body. Depending on the uh, experiment you run, you can define uh, the percentage of users which will receive each variant. You can have multiple variants. You can send this information to the analytics so you will know what people did. Uh, now it solves another problem in a kind of, I would say, nice way. 
So that's, that's dynamic. <clears throat> Isn't this breaking the web? Right? Uh, that's at least what Thin Cutlets uh, for. Uh, when he wrote a blog post about that, and he said, I will read that. AMP is in encouraging better performance on the web. AMP is, is encouraging the use of their specific tool to build a version of a web page. Yes? <laughs> but not true. Uh, if you see this article was written like almost uh, like 2015, which when the AMP started to be, it was, a, it was before the initial release. And after some time, uh, Jeremy Keith has written a response to this, I would say, where he's citing it is, and he's comparing AMP to RSS. And he has a very nice observation, and that is AMP is open source, and the project owners seem receptive to feedback. And that's very important, that's happened. Like, they want to make this succeed. They don't want to make it Google's own technology. They want, uh, they want to make it web fast, and this was the best way how to do that. And to illustrate that point, there's another quote from one of the AMP advocates that says, I dream of future still to be invented web standards that would allow us to, do, to get there, to move beyond cash models. And that's the, the ultimate goal for Google, let's say, to create the standard. But as we know, standards are born in pain and it takes years then to finish. They have something which works now. And, but I mean, yeah, that point will be discussed. And I, I do understand that, but I still believe that benefits are there and it's not closed system and they are cooperating with many companies. As I said, Baidu, for example, is uh, implementing that already. Uh, I, I met with uh, uh, Paul. I met with Paul last week, actually, on AMP Meetup. And I asked him about that. And he said that they want to open this caching model. Uh, the only thing they want to make sure is that everybody's on the newest versions. It's basically the only thing that holds them before releasing it to the wild. They, they just fear that there would be multiple versions of AMP running around. Right, AMP conf. As I said, in March there was an AMP conference. Uh, all the big names. <laughs> it's funny. No, I mean, it's a year old project, so not big names. No. Uh, they, they introduce the vision for the future. And I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, one of the things was that they start to create like these really single purpose uh, components, which I think is good because it means that the general purpose components are done, right? <laughs> one of them being uh, the parallax scrolling, where you can say, I mean, you can't see it because it's a PDF, but <laughs> the text moves differently than the background. It's a, it's a small thing, but many people want that. And this is a performant way how to do parallax scrolling, right? Another thing also interesting is AMP Start, which is a project of templates which you can start uh, using. You think of like free bootstrap themes. I don't know how it's called, like something like this. You have a full feature uh, template. You can just start editing and playing instead of like using the bare bone uh, AMP template. This one is by far the most interesting. I will read that. Backend Galo, that doesn't mean much. Modern American cuisine. What is that? That is not an article. That is a homepage of a business, right? That's a big change because in the past it was about content and articles. But now we see that AMP is also targeting these like small businesses where you need to know quickly like where they are, what time do they open, and how much does a uh, meal cost. And you want to know that on the mobile when you are in a subway here in Prague when you don't have an internet, right? And with AMP, it will be easy to do that. Oh. It works without the internet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Google's pretty advanced. But yeah. I work in a <laughs> No, as I said, it's, it's loaded asynchronously, it's small, it's optimized, so you can get the information, like the opening time, very fast. Like I, I can't imagine a faster way how to obtain that. But there's the most exciting thing 
that happened on the conference. It's called AMP bind. Oh yeah, bind. That makes AMP Turing complete. Okay, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the exciting okay. part. Sorry, yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said this someone. <laughs> what that means, in a weird way, is that you can add even more interactivity on the website. Like a lot of interactivity. This is kind of a, a Vue.js light or Angular version 1 light where you can click on something, like a button, uh, set some information to some state, some interactive thing, and then you can display something from the store in an element, change the class, and other things. Uh, if I, I mean, I have this, this is a really nice example, I don't want to touch it because this is my, my computer, but it shows a product page, an eShop product page, where you have items, you have different colors, the colors are available in various, si uh, various sizes, and when you click on, I don't know, uh, red, all images are now of the red model, and only the available sizes for that uh, color are shown. When you select that, you can click on send, and it will send you to the uh, to the basket. Again, it's an interactivity that wasn't like thinkable in the previous version of, of AMP, but now it, it makes it easier. And instead of learning how to use Vue.js or Angular or React or something like that, you can use this. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Vue.js, but this is this is this is okay. Uh, just to warn you, this is an experimental and still not uh, widely uh, usable in 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 the wild. But this is really exciting, and it moves the AMP to a totally different level. It's not like a, a server for the content, but it's also a, a, a framework. And one of the last points, uh, AMP and PWA. Oh, uh, abbreviations for the win, isn't it? So uh, what is the good thing about AMP? Uh, it's fast. It's optimized for, discover, for discovery, it doesn't have user scripts, and it's static content, right? On the other hand, uh, progressive web apps, for those who doesn't want, know that, it has really advanced features, it's very dynamic, it's, it's targeted on applications, meaning interactivity. And that means you have to download a lot of things at the beginning, so it's slow, and you can't embed that because it's an application, right? So you can't do that thing with the uh, search result page. But you can combine those together. Uh, and at the conference, there uh, were like three steps of uh, combining these together presented. I will go quickly through them. Uh, first one, AMP with uh, PWA features. <laughs> just laugh with those. Uh, you can just include manifest JSON and just load some things. That's kind of the easy thing. And doesn't mean much. The other thing is AMP as entry point to P. WA. There's a web component called install service worker. That means the uh, AMP comes up, the service worker is loaded, it rewrites uh, the links, and when you click on something, you don't go to the normal website, not the AMP website, but you will go to the uh, PWA website with the service worker already loaded so you can have it pre cached and everything. That's cool. Well, you can do more. There's a framework for including AMP in websites. So you can use something that would be a, uh, AMP and extend it with things, other things, and just call uh, attach shadow doc. That's a little bit advanced, there are tutorials on that, but it already works and it's, it's kind of can be the future how to make uh, PWA fast. So that leaves us the ultimate question, for whom? As you see, the first line are the companies I showed you that are already using it. They are kind of big names and they decided to use that because it makes sense to them, because they can share the knowledge. Uh, the, the companies below that there are dummy uh, companies you can buy with these logos on, online. And I'm saying it makes sense for small companies too. It makes sense for uh, individuals to use that because as I said, it's kind of easy to use it. I mean, you will, the benefit of, I think I said that, but the benefit 
of having something in common can overweight of benefit of being highly customized. But then you have websites like The Guardian that decide to do it their own way. And if you go from a, a from not from Google, but from somewhere else, they load faster because they are highly customized. But it costs them hours. By, that, by hours, I mean like a human hours, which means like, I don't know, so much time to do that. And they have teams and they have experts and they have to spend so much time. They need to be on the latest technologies to achieve that. And then, of course, would be some companies that don't want to do that either. Um, I'm, I, I think it's totally fine. You don't, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, there's an AMP train. It's, it's a little bit hype train, that's true. And I just want to say, you can try it. Because the train is in the station, you can get out. But it will provide you with huge benefits. And it's, and it's I mean, that is so fast. <laughs> Thank you.